Hi, I'm John Rhodes and welcome back. A big hello to all my subscribers and thanks to those of you that have just tuned in. Stay tuned because there's going to be many more interesting cases in the pipeline. In this video presentation, I'm looking at a molar root canal treatment. It's the maxillary right first molar that was root filled. However, the interesting thing in this case was getting the diagnosis right. I hope you enjoy it. Here you can see the preoptive radiograph of the maxillary right first molar. The tooth was symptomatic. There's a moderately large amalgam restoration. The canals appear somewhat sclerosed and there's no evidence of periapical radiolucency. So before we carry out root canal treatment on a tooth, we want to see some clear evidence that the pulp is either irreversibly inflamed and therefore cannot repair itself, is partially or totally necrotic, or there's a periapical abscess. In this case, it was a little bit more complicated. The patient had presented with pain on thermal stimuli and the tooth responded vaguely to endofrost and EPT. The preoptive radiograph that the GDP had sent, which is behind me, showed no evidence of periapical change. However, clinically, the tooth was tender when palpated over the buccal eminences, and a small volume CBCT clearly showed a periapical radiolucency at the apex of the MB root. I was very confident that we got the right tooth, and in fact, when you cut the access cavity, you could see the pulp was necrotic. So here we are looking at the small volume CBCT of the maxillary right first molar. I'm just checking the axial view to start with. And as I get to the apex of the MB root, I can see a periapical radiolucency. This is also present on the sagittal view. Closer examination of the MB root reveals that there are two root canals. These converge in the coronal third and the orifices are quite close together. I'm going to bear this in mind when I'm troughing along the line between the MB and palatal roots hunting for that MB2 orifice. Here you can see the tooth isolated with a non-latex rubber dam and a Hugh Freedy Black Series number 14 clamp. I'm making an access cavity using a long tapered diamond burr and at my first attempt I don't penetrate the pulp chamber. So back in with that long tapered diamond burr and now I can see the floor of the pulp chamber. It's slightly darker. I'm examining it with the DG16 endodontic probe. I've now uncovered the lateral aspects of the floor of the pulp chamber and using the DG16 I can see where the orifices of the MB, the DB and the palatal canals should be. The orifice of the DB canal was easy to locate as was the palatal.
it's now time to hunt for that MB2 canal. And I know from the CBCT that the orifices are going to be quite close together and covered with a little bit of dentine. I'm using a StarTex 3 ultrasonic tip to trough along the isthmus between the MB1 and MB2. The primary irrigant is warmed 3% sodium hypochlorite. In this case, I used a very conservative flaring of the orifices of the root canals with a Wave 1 Gold small instrument. Back to the hunt for the MB2 and I'm using that StarTex 3 tip again to trough a bit deeper between the MB1 and the MB2. I'm then going to pick up a micro opener to see if I can find the orifice of the MB2. Having located the orifice of the MB2, I can now flare this using the Wave 1 Gold small instrument. An apex locator was used to estimate the working length, reading to the zero reading and using a reproducible reference point. So now it's a simple case of tapering those root canals. In this case I used a Wave 1 Gold small and primary instrument interspersed with patency filing and irrigation with 3% sodium hypochlorite.
Here you can see the prepared MB1 and MB2 canals and they had confluence between them as we suspected from the CBCT prior to treatment. I used an endo activator to agitate the irrigant during the irrigation phase. Here in slow motion, the confluence between the MB1 and MB2 is nicely demonstrated. The canals were all dried with sterile paper points before being obturated using a vertically compacted gutter perker technique. So here again you can see the preoperative radiograph of the maxillary right first molar. And here's my final radiograph showing good coronal apical seal with some lateral anatomy at the apex. And the distal view showing the confluence of the MB1 and MB2. Well, I do hope you enjoyed that presentation. Please stay tuned because there's plenty more cases in the pipeline. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And above all, enjoy your endo.